This first reading is from Mark, chapter 8, verse 27, on page 1012 of the Church Bible. <coughs> Peter's Confession of Christ. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked people. Peter, I beg your pardon. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes to his Father's glory with the holy angels. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord. The second reading <coughs> is from Psalm 19, and it's on page 552. <coughs> the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens he has pitched a tent for the sun, <coughs> which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is hidden from its heat. Excellent. Thank you for those readings. Uh, we come to the, the word now, and as I said, it's a privilege to have, uh, have you here, Michael. We're really grateful for, to you for coming. We have a, a, a good link with the Luton Town Centre Chaplaincy, which is the work that Michael heads up through Helen, who is a member of this church and, and is is kind of uh, the administrator of the the uh, Luton Town Centre Chaplaincy. So we're committed to to that work as a church. And uh, but beyond that, we're we're pleased to have Michael here because he's a man of God, and he comes to share God's word. So not only for the great work that the the Luton Town Centre Chaplaincy is doing, but uh, for who he is as a servant of Christ. I have a particular joy in him coming here because he's from Northern Ireland, and that's uh, uh, he's a fellow countryman of mine in some strange way. Uh, that's strange on my part, not his. Um, so please come, Michael. I'd love to pray for you and then uh, bring the word of God to us. Lord, we thank you for this uh, man of God that you've raised up and the, the great work that he did in Watford uh, with the, the town center chaplaincy there and, and now these last five years here in Luton. We praise you for that work. We praise you for the many 
volunteers who make an excellent chaplaincy presence possible in this place. And we ask that you would bless the ministry that he's leading, bless him personally and his family and his household. But we pray also that you would bless the preaching of the word this morning. So as Michael opens up the scriptures and shares his heart with us, that we would be uh, receptive listeners and also those who put into practice what we hear, that it wouldn't bounce off and fall to the ground, but it would land in our hearts and yield a great harvest. So may his words be bold and forthright, and may our hearts be receptive and teachable. By the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning, all. Well, this is a novel experience for me being up here. You know, this is uh, yeah, quite good, isn't it? Yeah, like in this. So I, um, yeah, thinking about uh, this week about uh, speaking with you guys, and the Lord just gave me the words, the power and the presence of God, and uh, I just kind of thought I'd do a little whistle stop tour of some of the scriptures that uh, that highlight the power and the presence of God. So if, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go through, flick through uh, just a few of these scriptures, and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. It's, uh, it's so good to come here, because it's, um, I think the last time I spoke here was, um, gosh, nearly two years ago. And uh, as we were saying earlier, chaplaincy has now been established for uh, five years can't believe it. Five years, and uh, it's been a fantastic journey, and there's uh, plenty more to come. There's plenty more to come. So we're going to look at uh, the first uh, Bible verse here is in Matthew 14, where Jesus feeds the 5,000. And uh, I'm just going to flick through some of the verses here uh, to see that, uh, that, just, that just jump out. So we're looking at, so when Jesus heard that, uh, that what had happened, he withdrew to a boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the town. When Jesus landed and saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. The power and the presence of God made manifest. I'm going to flick over to Matthew 20. As I said, it's a little bit of a whistle-stop tour, but there's a reason behind my madness. <laughs> so we're looking at Matthew 20, uh, verses 33. 34. So we'll start at 32. So Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me? What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they answered. We want our sight. And Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately they received their sight and followed him. So now let's flick over to John. Good old John. John 8. So John 8. Then he went from his own home, but Jesus went from the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people had gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group, and he said to Jesus, 
teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law of Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have the basis of accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write from the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any of you is without sin, let him be the first to cast the stone at her. And again he stopped, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. funny isn't it because there's the power and the presence of God in a very different way isn't it and there's compassion made manifest again so now let's flick over to Mark 6 And Jesus said to them, verse from verse 4, And Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown among his relatives and in his own house a prophet is without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay hands, lay hands on the few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. <laughs> so just in those few little passages we looked at, we see a whole contrast of the power and the presence of God. And yet even in that last verse, we see Jesus, God made flesh, and yet there was many that he couldn't heal, because there's blockages in the way, a whole host of blockages going on. But here you had the, the living power and the presence of God in the person of Jesus Christ and many were not healed and yet in the verses we read at the beginning all were healed <laughs> so often when we when we have this expectation of the power and the presence of God we immediately jump to miracle signs and wonders all the sexy stuff that people might talk about all the great stuff all the big stuff but actually, the power and the presence of God comes in so many ways and shapes and forms. It's funny because I was looking at some of the healing on the street stuff we've done in the past, and it's just extraordinary the way in which people have been healed in so many different ways. Uh, as we do healing on the streets from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock every single Saturday in the town center. But I can tell you the vast majority of people who have been healed, it wasn't through you know, legs growing, of, which of course there have been, or broken arms being held, or hearing being restored. The, mass, the, das, the vast majority of people who are healed is they're healed of broken hearts and broken minds. You know, it's not the big wow stuff. It's the real meaningful stuff that, that goes deep inside of people. And that's where God wants to touch first and foremost. That transformational dimension that comes in and through each and every one of us when the Spirit of God dwells within us. And the key factor in all of this is that one word, compassion. Jesus had compassion on them. And it's just extraordinary when we when we adopt all of the fruits of the Spirit and we take on the gifts of the Spirit, we see the power and the presence of God made manifest. But all too often we become a little bit selective on some of that stuff. You know, we make a, a cocktail of our faith almost. Oh, I'll have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But actually God wants us to have it all. To live fully in the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. 
and to see his power and his presence made manifest through <coughs> each and every one of us, wherever we find ourselves, in whatever circumstance, in whatever place. As I was preparing for this, I was looking at the healing in the street stuff, and I just thought, I'll have a flick, a flick through the, old, the uh, internet. And there's a guy I came across a while ago called Pete Cabrera. I'm not sure if you've come across him, but just Google Pete Cabrera when you get home. And uh, it's just really interesting. He's uh, an extraordinary ministry on the street. And uh, on this particular occasion, he went to Mexico, and uh, he, he trained up a few guys from one of the local churches, and they found themselves just wandering through a local market. And so he got his mobile phone out, and he just says, you know, hi, guys, we're here today, and uh, we've just arrived, and he's talking to his phone, and he says, I'm with this uh, guy here. We've just trained so three for three days, and uh, we're just going to wander through the market, and he's got his mobile phone with him. And uh, so one of the stall holders, he's a uh, bloke's chance stand chatting to him, and he says, uh, can I pray for you? And he says, yeah, that'd be great. I've got a really bad back. So, uh, so he prayed for her, completely healed. And, uh, and then they, you know, she points to her sister. My sister's got a bad shoulder. Can you pray for her? And she says, yeah, I'd love to. So he walks over to her and he prays for her, and she's, she's instantly healed. And the guy's getting all this on his mobile phone. And then he walks along to the next store, and everyone's all starting to look because it's like there's a commotion going on. So he said, prays for this bloke over there. Yeah, I've got, you know, I've got a bad leg. Well, can I pray for your leg? Yeah, I can pray for your leg. Prays for his legs, instantly healed. And before you know it, within 10 or 15 minutes, the market is alive, and there's people queuing up to be prayed for. And it's like, oh, can you pray for me? And can you pray for me? And it's like, there's the power and the presence of God made manifest. You know, it's not rocket science, this stuff. All it takes is that step of faith. <laughs> All it takes is that step of faith, that level of boldness to go out and just to say those simple words, can I pray for you? And it's just amazing, you know, as an organization, as a chaplaincy, you know, we've got a big team of chaplains now. But that's one of the first things that we think about. Can I pray for you? And I can tell you there's no one has rejected any of us. It's so simple. Can I pray for you? But it's so profound. More often we find people burst into tears when we pray for them because the Spirit of God comes upon them. Often they don't feel worthy. Why would, why would God be interested in me of all I've done, the bad person that I am? And yet, can I pray for you? It's so simple and yet so profound and so missed in the world in which we live in today. So we bring the power and the presence of God just by saying those simple words. Can I pray for you? I'm going to share some stories. Uh, as you can imagine, I love telling stories because, you know, I love the scriptures. Brilliant. You know, Hebrews 4.12, the Spirit of God is alive and active. You know, when we read this stuff, it becomes alive to us. But we've got to apply it, haven't we? So apply the theology is my thing. We read it. God speaks to us through it. And we apply it wherever we go. And that's the wonderful thing because the Spirit of God dwells within us. He's given us all the power and all the authority to do what Jesus did. And indeed, Jesus said, you will do even greater things than these. <laughs> Which is just amazing. Let me tell you about, uh, I think the last time I was here, I shared to you about, uh, I started a new project at a place called The Depot. Now, Depot's where all the bin lorries are and all the, all the bin guys who work on the bins. And the um, yeah, special needs buses, you know, they're all there. There's a big garage on site that does all the maintenance of the lorries and the trucks and all the rest of it. So on site, there's about 400 people or so. And, uh, you know, it's just incredible the opportunities 
that, uh, that we have to draw alongside people in a whole range of different ways. There's a guy, uh, one of the guys I met, uh, I won't mention any names or anything, but he's, uh, he's going through a really messy divorce. And I'd been working with him probably for about a year and just trying to encourage him, and he's going into a massive depression. And we'd sit there in his room, and, and this is a big guy, I mean, a really big guy, and uh, martial arts expert, and there he's there on the other side of this table bawling his eyes out. You know, broken hearted. Wasn't expecting this coming at all. And, uh, you know, there he was. This divorce went through. And uh, I hadn't seen him for a few weeks. And then I saw him, and then, you know, when I came in again one day, and he says, Can I speak to you? He just looked really worried. And uh, he tried to commit suicide. Put a. Uh, you know, a cable tie around his neck, pulled it tight, and uh, felt himself go off. And he thought, well, that's it. I'm, I'm dying now, so he's, he's losing. So he explained this to me, you know, bit by bit, what was going on. And he says, you know, it was amazing. I just came to. And, uh, and he says, this thing in my neck, I says, I just held it, and it just fell onto the ground. And he said, you know, cable ties don't feel, do they, Michael? And I says, no, mate, they don't. You know, if you ever use a cable tie, when you pull that thing tight, uh, you can't get that off. You have to cut it off. And so he said to me then, he said, someone wants me alive, don't they? And I says, I do. They do. I said, listen, mate, God's got a plan and a purpose for you. And you know what? <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, um, a year later, he's a completely different person. Completely different person. Absolutely amazing. Extraordinary turnaround. You know, but um, that's the power and the presence of God. You know, and I don't take any credit for that. It's just God using my hands, my feet, my ears, what comes out of my mouth. It's just that sense of being presence and availability are um, are things that often we overlook in the world in which we live in today. Just to give people the time of day to listen. <laughs> you know, we live in such a busy society, such a busy culture. We've all got jobs to do and we've all got to do this and we're rushing here and we're rushing there and rushing everywhere. And all the while, there's people out there who desperately need Jesus. There's people out there who need a touch from the king. And all too often, we miss those opportunities. I do it all the time. I know that I miss opportunities time and time and time again. But it's just having that sensitivity, that awareness, that listening ear, uh, where the Spirit of God's just directing us. I was down at the depot just last week. I, uh, you know, hanging out with my, my, my guys, as I call them, you know, and uh, the site has all changed. They'd, they'd moved the whole areas and buildings around and all the rest of it. And uh, so basically what happens, you're not allowed to smoke on site anymore. So as you can imagine, a lot of these guys smoke. So they're all standing outside. I'm arrived there about quarter to six in the morning. And I says, where is everyone? Oh, they're all outside on the street. All right, is that where we pick up the trucks from? Yes. We so I wandered out with one of, the other, one of the other guys. And there's a big crowd, but I know 20 standing around, all smoking. It looked like a, bit, like a picket line. <laughs> you know, and uh, every, once the first, the first Friday of every month, I go out with the Bin Larry crews. And um, uh, they kind of, they, they expect me. Some of them know me and some of them don't. But the majority of them kind of know me now. So, uh, so I'm now walking outside, and they're standing with me, all these blokes. And I says, where's, uh, where's Refuse 5? And one guy puts his hand up. Well, that's me, mate. That's me. All right. Yeah, brilliant. You know, I'm, I'm with you. So I, I have like a high-vis jacket on, and I've got you know, our logo, this logo on here, and, and Chaplin on the back, you see. So uh, they all, most of them all kind of know me now, and uh, they kind of know what's coming. Right? So... Uh, 
So, uh, so this guy puts his hand up, and I'm standing. He says, uh, "He says, who are you?" I says, oh, "He says, you one of the new carriers." Like I always think I'm like one of the one of the guys who does the business. So I says, "No, I'm uh, I'm a chaplain." So uh, everything goes quiet, and they're all going, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's kind of looking a bit confused. And he says, "What's a chaplain?" <laughs> and uh, one of the guys pipes up. And he says, "He's the vicar." <laughs> no. <laughs> And <laughs> you know, I tell you what, he goes, F and L. He says, <laughs> he says, are you going to death and well tell me about God all morning? And uh, I tell you what, this is like six o'clock in the morning. The whole place fell about laughing. And uh, he says, don't swear at the vicar. He says, I'm effing not swearing the vicar. I was, and this all, all this stuff. And it's just like, it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. So I um, uh, <laughs> So I says, your day just got better, mate. You know, so we, uh, we jumped in the truck and, and drove around. And, you know, he realized I wasn't a threat. You know, he realized I wasn't going to, you know, bash his head over the head with a Bible. You know, but actually he knew who I was. You know, and, you know, we had a, a few conversations, getting to know you type of thing. And that was it. But the fact was that, you know, there we were, all those guys in the street, and we're able to have a good old laugh together, you know. Their 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 um, their um, you know their impression of uh, of a minister or a vicar is like, um, you know, you're coming there to convert them. You know, that's one of the things that uh, that I got time and time again. There's a few roughnecks down there, as you can imagine, and uh, and often say, "Oh, you're coming down to convert us today." You know, and I say, oh, no, he says, no, 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 it's not, it's, that's not my job, that's God's job. You know, but, uh, you know, I'll just chat to you, you know, and see how you're doing. You know, we're here to, to support you in whatever way we can. We just want to listen to you. And, uh, and we have some fantastic conversations, absolutely priceless. And, you know, you get stuff like that going on, it's just brilliant. I love it, I absolutely love it, because it's like, you know, these are guys are just raw, you know, they just... They, they tell it like it is, and, uh, but actually they're searching for something, and they're searching for meaning, and they're searching for purpose. They're searching, you know, why am I here? What's God about? You know, I remember one time was dri- we were driving around, we were going around um, the farm, as we call it, Marsh Farm, you know. Many of you will know it, where Marsh Farm is and what it's about, and I love it, you know, because it's like, it's edgy. So, uh, so I'm out with the truck, and the guys are emptying the bins, and and uh, so I'm, as I wander around, sometimes I'll I'll often be praying as I'm wandering around the streets, and especially Marsh Farm with all the the history behind that, and I'm asking for the presence of God just to come in the streets and in the houses, and I'm looking at places, and you know, pointing to door numbers, and you know, people walking by, and you know, God just come into Marsh Farm through the power of Your Holy Spirit. And uh, I jump back into the truck, and the very first words that, uh, that come out of the driver's mouth, you know, we had been talking about a chaplain and stuff like that. And the very first words, he says, Michael, he says, um, he says, what's prayer? What's prayer? You know, basic stuff for all of us. But for him, he says, what is it? He says, don't get what this prayer thing is. And uh, I says, listen, prayer is just a conversation with God, mate. That's all it is. It's a conversation with God. And uh, he says, oh, I thought you had to do all that Our Father stuff and, and all these thing, other things. I said, no, no, says, you can do that if you want. But prayer is just a conversation with God. Oh, I see. He says, oh, that's all right then. I says, yeah, it is. Yeah. I says, you can talk to him anytime. You can talk to him now if you want. He says, oh, it's all right. You know, and it's carry on driving. And we had a great discussion about the Bible. You know, what's the Bible? The Bible is the living word of God. God speaks to us. Does he not? You know, it does he? Aye. Yeah. You just pick one up one day and read it. You know, and God will speak to you and you can talk to him. Can I? You can. It's not rocket science. It's that sense of being there. You know, and I didn't convert him. You know, there was nothing major happened as far as I could see, but certainly he drew closer to God through me just jumping in his truck and just going around. The power and the presence of God, the 
comes manifest in so many different ways. You know, I was driving here this morning, I was pondering on that. Your birth of a child, wow. Your birth of a child, the power and the presence of God. It's a miracle every single time a child is born, in my view. Isn't it amazing that God's enabled us as human beings and often we underestimate the simple things in life, stuff that we take for granted. I remember when uh, my middle child was bor born Christian. I, uh, you know, I was there for all the births, good old dad, and uh, and you know, Christian had just been born, you know, and the uh, the midwife says, "And like, would you like to cut the um, cut the umbilical cord?" <laughs> I thought, "Oh, this is novel. Never done this before." So uh, I thought, well, what do I do? So she gave me these big pair of scissors, and the cord was there. I thought, oh, okay. And uh, so I thought, I better say something. So I uh, get the scissors, and I, so I thought, I named this child Christian Campbell. I was like sinking a ship, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> I thought, what a stupid thing to say, you know. Bring in the bottle of champagne, smash it on the, you know, <laughs> smash it in the, I named this child Christian Campbell. I named this ship. You know, it's a much stupid thing to say. You know, but it was um, it was funny though. I just thought, well, I've got to say something. You know, but the birth of a child is is such a beautiful thing, isn't it? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. The power and the presence of God made manifest through a couple celebrating their love for each other through the birth of a child. Do you know, I could keep talking for hours because there's uh, so many things to talk about and so many things to say. But, you know, um, you could do a whole sermon series on the signs of the power and the presence of God. You know, it's extraordinary. Once we begin to think about it, so you're not going to think about the signs, wonders, and miracles. So I'm just going to grab one of these tissues, sorry. And uh, think about the everyday and the ordinary, the stuff that we take for granted. Just walking into your place of work and smiling. Morning, John, how you doing? How's your day been? Ah, it's rubbish. Oh, well, can I pray for you? <laughs> you know, that handshake, the power and the presence of God dwells within us. And so everywhere we go, we must never, ever underestimate that. The Spirit of God dwells within us. So the very ground that we walk on, those people who we touch through a handshake, that smile, that little moment of making their day that little bit better, the power and the presence of God made manifest through those who believe in Jesus. Those followers of Jesus. The church without walls. The church without walls. We come to a building here and we call this church. But it's not at the building. You're the church. You're the church. You're the church. The church is the people not the building. So when the church goes out, as in the people, the church is in the midst of everywhere we walk, everywhere we find ourselves. That is the church and the power of Christ working in and through us everywhere we go. Saying earlier, I love the Bible and uh, we... Uh, for the last year, I've been working with Gideon's, the Gideon Bible Society, to, uh, to try and uh, see if we could get their Bibles. Because, uh, you know, I love the Bible. Put it in someone's hand, they'll love it because the Spirit of God speaks through it. And uh, so, I mean, for the last year, we've been working with Gideon's Bibles. And uh, they're very um, protective of their Bibles. It's like, we want to make sure the people who get those Bibles know why they're getting them. 
And, uh, and rightly so. They're not, it's not just uh, like a flyer you can throw out and they'd be chucked in the ground. These are expensive, these things. It's the living word of God. So uh, we've been talking about with them and their, their national guys for a little while. And uh, I says, look, you know, town centre chaplaincies are growing and expanding all of the time right across the UK. And I know you guys provide Bibles for the, uh, the prisons, which is fantastic. You know, hospital chaplaincy, prison chaplaincy. Um, have you considered supplying Bibles to this new movement of town and city chaplaincies? And they said, no, we hadn't. You know, so we had a long talk about how we do it and what we do. Excuse me. And, um, and in the end of it, they said, you know, we'd love to supply, you know, town and city chaplaincies with Bibles. And this is now a national directive, which is just fantastic. So uh, I got my first, my first, you know, consignment of Bibles, 100 Bibles from Gideon's Bible Society. Gorgeous little things, beautiful, I love them. And uh, so I, you know, give packs to different, my different teams around the town. And... Um, uh, so this week, um, there was uh, one of our chaplains was in the Crown Courts, and uh, she's in the witness service area, and uh, one of the ladies sort of says to her, uh, oh, excuse me, hi, uh, you know, you, do you remember me from before? She says, uh, oh, yes, no, I, I prayed with you before. She says, yes, she did. She says, can you pray for me again? So uh, she says, yeah, of course, I'd love to. So she starts praying with her, and she noticed a Bible in her hand. She says, um, oh, can I have the Bible? She says, yeah, of course you can. She gives her Gideon Bible. And there's a Muslim lady sitting beside her. And she says, oh, can I have one of those too? She says, uh, yeah, you can have one of those too. So, uh, so she's got her little Bibles with her, you know, her little stack. And um, she walks out into the foyer area. And there's a lady there really distressed. And uh, she sat down beside her and said, uh, oh, you know, I'm a chaplain, you know. Can I pray for you? She says, yes, I'd love you to pray for me. And uh, this lady continued to tell you about her, her three sons who were in and out of prison. She was very distressed. And one was you know, up in court that day. And uh, so she says, um, you know, would you like a Bible? She says, yeah, I'd love a Bible. So there's three Bibles gone in, uh, in the space of 10 minutes. And, uh, and then she says, uh, would you like a Bible for your three sons? And she says, yes, I'd love a Bible for my three sons. <laughs> you know, so there's six Bibles gone, and only dropped ten in the day before. <laughs> you know, so these Bibles are now going like hotcakes. You know, it's the living Word of God into the hands of everyday ordinary people, and it's precious and it's, it's, it's wonderful to be able to do that. He's creating so many opportunities for us. So I don't know how much time I've got left, or am I, am I way all over time? What's, what's the deal here? Should I keep going? Do you want me to keep going for a little? Is there still, still space? So, um, excellent. <laughs> don't give me that license to tell you. You could be here for the next four hours. <laughs> so I, um, there's, a, there's a second-hand bookshop open uh, in, Watf in, in Watford, in Luton High Street, uh, near Market Hill. And uh, if you want to go, go and pop in there. You know, it's just in the corner. And uh, there's a big guy in there, Victor, who I know. And uh, I've worked with him before. He's, a, he's like a community worker, martial arts expert. And, uh, you know, Victor's uh, an atheist. And uh, he wouldn't mind telling me this story. Is, uh, you know, we've got some, some really good chats every now and again. So, uh, so this bookshop had just opened about, you know, two or three weeks. And I'm wandering by, you know, as I'm doing, walking down the street. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll just pop into this new bookshop and, uh, and see what the deal is. So I wander in there and um, big Victor, I said, oh, Victor, how you doing? He says, oh, he says, oh, you're the chaplain. I says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, I can't believe it. You've just walked in. I says, why is that? He says, because uh, we're just having a debate. So there's two other guys and there's two people on each side of him. He says, we're having this debate, or our argument, you might want to call it, about whether God exists or not. And uh, I says, of course he exists. What are you talking about? And uh, so these other guys on each side, they're, oh, we're going to have a good old go here. You know, so I says, yeah, you know I'm a chaplain. You know, I'm a Christian. Of course God exists, Victor. What are you on about? He says, oh, well, so he starts going all, all through all the normal stuff. 
I says, listen, tell you what, see outside that window there, look outside. So this is opposite Market Hill, so just, you know, 20 feet away. I said, see out there on Market Hill. You know, we have a team of people who pray for people every single week, and they're healed for a whole range of different things. Now, don't tell me God doesn't exist, you know. So we get this really good debate going. And I says, look, tell you what, so Victor sat there with his laptop, and, uh, and I says, look, get on the internet, you know, Google healing on the streets. And, of course, there's a number of other people sat around. They're all, they're all going, oh, oh, this is good. Oh, oh. So they're on their phones, and they're all Googling it. And, uh, and so healing on the streets, there's lots of different stuff going on. And uh, so people are being healed left, right, and center, you know. And with the, with the power of Google, you know, and the power of the media, you know, here's this, um, this interaction going on that uh, I'm having this debate with Victor and everyone else is on their laptops or mobiles talking about whether God exists or not. And there they're seeing it straight in there. You know, the power and the presence of God through miracles, signs, and wonders. And, uh, I, you know, time was running out for me. And I said, look, Victor, I have to go because, you know, I really genuinely did have another appointment. So, uh, so I just left them debating all of this. And so I'm walking out. I get to the door and, uh, and Victor says, hey, Michael. I says, what? He says, respect. <laughs> <laughs> I says, yes, mate. You know, I'll be back, you know. So it's, uh, it's so funny. I was just chatting to him the other day. He was walking by. I said, someone dropped in a load of secondhand Bibles to me uh, a few weeks ago. I said, Victor, I'll call in later, mate, and, uh, and I'll drop a load of second, these, these secondhand Bibles in. He says, yeah, look forward to it. So I haven't dropped them in yet, but I look forward to it. I need to clear space in my diary, you know, because we'll have a good old chat, he and I, about, uh, about the value of the Bible and the living word of God and how God speaks to us through it. I'm going to finish now. Like I said, I could keep going for hours. But, uh, you know, what I, what I thought I'd do is uh, it's just pray for you guys because it's, um, you know, you've been through, you know, quite a lot as a church over the, over the last number of years. And you're in this position that, um, you know, you're looking for a new vicar. You know, he or she, we don't know. But, uh, you know, you're looking for someone. You're looking for a leader. And uh, so what I'd like to do is just pray for you. But not only pray for you, just ask for the, um, the presence of God just to, to come amongst you. Because um, that's pretty cool, that's why. <laughs> you know, and God wants to minister to us and speak to us and nurture us and love us and support us and direct us. And we can't do that without God. We can't do that without the Holy Spirit. So when I start to pray, um, I just want you all to be really quiet. Don't say a word. Say absolutely nothing. And then, uh, and that's it. We'll just pray. We'll just be really quiet. Let God just minister to you. And then we'll just go into a time of worship. Whenever that be. Yeah? You okay with that? So just relax. And, uh, and just enjoy God just speaking to you. Father God, I just thank you for Christ Church Bushmead. For those years ago when someone had the vision to plant the church in the middle of this estate. And Lord, I just thank you. It's glorifying to you to have your presence here through this church and through this building and through everyone in this room. So Lord, I just pray that you would continue to work in and through this fellowship. Lord, continue to nurture, continue to love, continue to support, continue to guide and direct. And Lord, as we just read in Scripture earlier, that this church becomes known for its compassion in and around this community. Lord, it becomes known for its love for the people in and around this community. 
Lord, it comes known as a fellowship where people can be accepted for who they are, no matter what they've done, no matter what they look like, no matter what they smell like. <laughs> Lord, for the broken, may it be a place that is made known where the broken can come and be healed and loved and nurtured and cared for. Lord, may it be known as a place that's full of your Holy Spirit, full of your gifts. Lord, may it be known as a place where the living God resides place of welcome, a place of joy, pure joy, a place of hope, a place of light, a place of wonder. Lord, may you come, <coughs> come in all your power, come in all your glory. Come in all your presence. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you amongst us now. Lord, just come. Come amongst us. And may 